So what should I do? Um, plug, it plug it in. So I have negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. So it's whatever that number is times itself. What's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. What's negative 3 times negative 2? Positive 6. And what's 4 plus 6? 10. For these questions, you have to write your answer as a point. So what did I plug in for x? Negative 2. Negative 2. And what did I get as my answer? 10. So remember, x comes before y. Just like x comes before y in the alphabet, x comes before y. So you always write your x first, then your y. So that's our answer. So you have to write your answer as a point. In the directions on the quiz, it'll say write your answer as a point or write your answer as a coordinate. So it'll be specific in the directions. For number four, what should I do first? Nick, plug it in. Negative 9 squared minus 4 times negative 9. What is negative 9 squared? 81. 81, thank you. Negative 9 times negative 9, 81. What's negative 4 times negative 9? Positive 36. 81 plus 36? 117. Awesome, 117. So how would I write my answer? Uh, negative 9, comma, 117. Perfect. Negative 9, comma, 117. Number 6, what should I do? Nick. Plug it in. So 2 times negative 8 minus 3. What's 2 times negative 8? Negative 16. Negative 16. And what's negative 16 minus 3? Negative 19. You guys are on fire today. How do I write my answer? Negative 8, comma, negative 19. Negative 8, comma, negative 19. Perfect. That's my answer. We're only doing evens in class, but you have to do all of it for homework. Any questions on the first part? So here we have to write the equation of our line in slope-intercept form. What is slope-intercept form? Y equals mx plus b. Awesome. So m is what? The slope. And b is what? The y-intercept. So all I'm doing for these is taking my slope and my y-intercept and plugging it in. So for number 8. What would my equation of the line be? Awesome. Y equals negative 3 over 5x minus 1. Notice how I don't put the plus when it's a negative y-intercept. It just becomes minus. The minus kind of overpowers the plus. So you wouldn't write plus minus 1. Just minus 1. Any questions here? All right, number 10. So y equals what? Nick. Y equals negative 4x minus 4. Awesome. Y equals negative 4x minus 4. So that's it for those. Any questions? All you're doing is plugging in the slope and the y-intercept. Number 12. So 12 and 14, we have to find the slope. Anybody remember what my slope formula is? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Awesome. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So the Ys are on top, the Xs are on the bottom. This is my slope formula. And just remember, you have to keep it consistent. So I start off with the 2s, and then I have the 1s. So like the Second points are going to be on top of each other, and the ones are going to be top, on top of each other. And you're subtracting. 
So it always helps to label. That way you can just plug it right into your formula. So I have x1, y1, x2, y2. Because this is my first point, so point number one. So that's my x and y ones. This is point number two. So those are my twos. Yes? Negative 5 minus 4 over negative 3 minus negative 5. Awesome. So what's negative 5 minus 4? Negative 9. They're both negative, so you'd add them together. Negative 9. And then what's what happens when I have minus a negative? It turns positive. It turns positive, so you add. So it's negative 3 plus 5. 2. Two. Can I simplify negative 9 over 2? Nope. nope, so that's my answer. If you wanted to say negative 4.5, you could, but you can just leave it as a fraction. When your final answer is like 0 over a number, is it undefined or no? So if 0 is on top, is that the next one? No. Okay. When 0 is on top, if you had 0 over 4, what would my answer be? 0. zero. What if 0 is on the bottom? Then it's then it's undefined. So this is helpful hint. I think one of the even problems is zero. So, so if zero is on top, your answer is zero. All right, let's look at 14. So I have x1, y1, x2, y2. What's negative 5 minus 5? Zero. Negative 10. They're both negative, so you add them. So negative 10. And then what happens when I have minus a negative? It becomes a plus. So what's 0 plus 4? Four? 4. Can I simplify this? Yes. What number Two. goes into both the top and the bottom? Awesome. 2. So what's negative 10 divided by 2? Negative 5. And what's 4 divided by 2? Two? 2. So my answer is negative 5 over 2. So this page and the next page is stuff from 2.1 where we have our domain and range and whether it's a function or not. So just a reminder, if we have two arrows coming out of 1x, is this a function? No, not a function. Can't have two arrows coming out of 1x. Not a function. What if it was given to me in coordinate points, and let's say my x is repeat. If I had 1, 3, and 1, 2. If my x is repeat, is that a function? No. Not a function. What if my y's repeat? So let's say I had... 1, 3, and 2, 3. Would this be a function? My y's repeat? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a function. So your y's can repeat, your x's cannot. So x's cannot repeat. Also, for domain and range, I'm just going to make a little note here as a reminder. Domain is what? The x values or the y values? Domain is the x, and that means range is y. So just as a little reminder. So in our mapping diagram, the x's come first, then the y's come second. Is this a function? For a. Raise your hand if you think it's a function. Raise your hand if you think it's not a function. It's not a function. And what number makes it not a function? One. one. Because I have two arrows coming out of the one, this would be not a function. What about for B? Is this a function? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this would be a function. All right. For number 3A, is this a function? 
not a function. What would my domain be? Remember, these are your x's, these are your y's. One, three, negative five. Awesome. One, three, negative five. If the number repeats, you don't have to list it twice. You don't list it twice. So domain is the x values, that means range is the y values. So what am I, what's my range? Nick. Awesome. And then you're just listing them with the little squigglies as your brackets. All right, let's look at B. Is this a function? Yes, it is a function. What is my domain? Awesome. All the numbers in my x bubble. So I'm just listing all of these numbers here. 1, negative 1, 0, negative 3, and 3. What's my range? One, negative one, and six. So just all my numbers in my y bubble. Do you guys have any questions here? All right, ready for the next page? So looking at C, is this a function? No, because I have two arrows coming out of an X, so this would be not a function. I'll save this one for you guys to list the domain and range. For graphing questions, determining if it's a function or not, we have to do the vertical line test. So if I put a vertical line through my graph and it touches at two points, would that be a function? No. no. So if it touches at two points, it's not a function. So looking at number four, would this be a function? No. Why? Because, because awesome. If I put a vertical line right here, it touches at these two points, so this would be not a function. What about for number five? No. Nope, because if I put a vertical line, it touches at two points, so this is not a function. Number six, determine whether the relation is a function. If it's not a function, circle the ordered pairs that cause it to be a function, that cause it not to be a function. So remember, for these, I'm only looking at the x's. So I have negative two, zero, one, one, two, and three. Do I have any x's that repeat? One and one. One and one. So is this a function? No. Nope. And the two coordinates with the one, the two ordered pairs that have the one, are what I have to circle, because that would be what makes it not a function. Looking at B, my x's are 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 5. Is this a function? Yes. yes. None of the x's repeat, so that's a function. I'll let you guys do C on your own, but I'm going to list the domain and range for B here, just as practice. So what would my domain be? Remember, domain is your x values. So what are my x values in the points? For A or B? For B. Uh, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. Awesome. So I'm just listing my x's. Nick, what's my range? Range is one, negative one, two, two, three, one. Do I have to list the two twice? No. No. Nope. Do I list the one twice? Nope. So if it repeats, you don't list it twice. So there's my domain and my range for B. 
Remember, domain is x values, range is y values. And I'll leave you guys C to do on your own. Any questions here? Ready for the last page? All right, let's look at, we're doing the even, so 18. So for these, I have to put it in slope intercept form. So what slope intercept form? Y equals mx plus b. For 18, what should I do first to get it into my y equals mx plus b? Move the three. Move the three. How do I move the three? Subtract. subtract. So since it's being added, I'm going to do the opposite and subtract it. So it'll cancel out there. Can I combine these two numbers together? No. no. So it would just be 2x minus 3. What can I do next? Yeah, I already have it. Since it's y equals, I can just put y equals on that side and just move it. Because that's like saying 2 is equal to x, x is equal to 2. You can just flip the order. Mm -hmm. So this is my answer. Just make sure you have the y all by itself, and then the x comes next, and then the number. So number 20, what should I do? Subtract the y. I can subtract the y to get it to the other side. So I have negative y is equal to x minus 6. Then what do I need to do? Divide, Divide by what? By one. Divide by a negative 1 to make that y a positive. So I divide everything by negative 1. Got to make sure I do it to everything in my equation. So the y now becomes positive y. What's x divided by negative 1? Negative, negative x. And what's negative 6 divided by negative 1? Six. Positive 6. Awesome. Any questions there? All right, let's look at 22. What should I do first? Divide, by five. divide everything by 5. So it'll cancel out here. So I have y is equal to 3 over 5x. What's negative 20 divided by 5? Nick. Negative 4. That's my answer. Yes. So looking at 24. To graph, I need my slope and my y-intercept. What's my slope? One. One half. And what's my y-intercept? Four. Four. What am I going to put first on my graph? The y-intercept. Am I going up, down, left, or right? Four. Up four. Awesome. So there's my point. And then what can I do? Awesome. Rise over run. So I go up one to the right two. There's my second point. You only need two points, just connect your dots, and that's your line. You can always check, just to be extra sure, my slope, is it positive or negative? Positive. positive. So if I was a person walking on this line, am I walking uphill? Yeah, so I'm walking uphill, which means I have a positive slope. So just to double check that you put your rise over run in the right spot. It's always good to double check, just to be sure. Any questions there? All right, 26. What's my slope? Negative one, awesome. And what's my y-intercept? One. So what am I gonna put first on my graph? One. Up one. And then my slope is negative one, so which direction am I going? Awesome. This is like negative 1 over 1, so I have rise over run. Since it's negative, I go down 1 to the right one. So there's my second point. So there's my line. 
just to be sure that I went in the right direction, I'm going to double check. I have my slope is negative 1, so it's negative slope. If I was walking, I'm going downhill, so I put my dots in the right direction. Since I'm going downhill, negative slope goes down. Remember, you always walk from left to right, just like how you read from left to right. You read a graph from left to right. So this would be decreasing. I'm going to do one on the side here, just as a little review. So if, I'm going to draw two graphs. If I had a line that was a horizontal line, what would my slope be? Or if I had a vertical line, what is my slope? So a horizontal line, what's my slope? What do you think? Is it zero or undefined? Yeah. Be confident. Nick, what do you think? If it's a horizontal, is it undefined? So let's see, if I was a person walking. What happens to me if I'm walking on this purple line? I would die. So what's my slope? Undefined. If I was skiing, let's say I was skiing, would I be moving on this line if it's flat? No, so there's no slope. So you wouldn't be hitting the slopes if you were skiing. There's no slope, so it's zero. It could be. So just a little review.